Diego. All right. So although my career trajectory from studying Chinese opera and music in Taiwan to writing a book about the American opera singer Beverly Sills may seem a little bit strange, in fact, the thread that ties these things together for me is my conviction that art matters and that beautiful art matters in the lives of ordinary people. My own history with Beverly Sills dates from my, uh, from the, my teens when I heard her perform in my hometown in Ohio in the Midwestern Rust Belt in the late 1970s. Sills enjoyed tremendous popularity from the late 1960s through the 1980s. Hers was a household name. She appeared on the cover of Newsweek magazine, Time magazine. She even appeared on the cover of the San Diego Telephone Directory in 1974. <laughs> yeah, the old area code. Uh, she appeared on every late night show. She hosted the Tonight Show several times. So this was really quite extraordinary and almost impossible to imagine from today's perspective when you just don't see opera singers, but she was a real phenomenon. So she died in, in July 2007, and it was really um, stunning to me. And this book that I wrote, whoops, whoops, whoops back, back, um, was the result of my going on a kind of exploratory journey to understand why she affected me the way that she did. So in my work, I chose to look at her performance of Anne Boleyn in Donizetti's opera, Anna Bolena. And that was the focus of one of my book chapters. In my few minutes that I have here this evening, I'm going to illustrate for you my method in exploring the ways in which the audience engaged with her in performance. And my work with Anna Belena was aimed primarily at reconstructing something of how she executed this role. I must note that we have very few videos of Beverly Sills in performance, and we have none of her and Anna Belena. So this was a kind of um, a forensic case, trying to figure out what did she do and how did people feel about it. I selected this opera, Anna Blaine, partly because I simply love her performance of it, and also my research uncovered a number of really important sources, such as fans who were very eager to share their experiences seeing it, and I also had contact with a number of the performers who sang with her in this opera. And through an active fan network, I was able to get a hold of five bootleg recordings of her performances. And these are really rich, so much more rich than studio recordings. And I even located her personal highly annotated score, which now is in the New York Public Library for the Performing Arts at Lincoln Center. And that was a real moment, let me tell you. So this page, this moment is represented on the page, is a great illustration of her engagement in this performance. I had read that Sills Anna Bolena slapped King Henry VIII in this New York City opera production. And when I first listened to the bootleg of the premiere, I heard an audience member at one point go, oh, I thought, wow, could that be it? And I want you to hear that moment. So the recording is going to begin right about there. And these speakers, you're going to definitely hear him say, oh. Okay. So when I finally got to see her score, sure enough, you see the word slap there. <laughs> and then with all of my work, I always try and confirm and reconfirm, is this really what happened? So I had the good luck to interview the man who had played her, King Henry VIII, and Robert Hale, the performer that sang that role, he was able to confirm that, yes, she slapped me just before I sang audacious, um, audacious woman, audacious donna. So, um, I also then went to the fans and, and tried to get a sense of how they felt about this, the ones that had seen Anna Bolena. So part of my construction, or my uh, reconstruction of Sill's stage actions also involved the audience's interpretation and their experience. And so these kinds of sounds that we hear, like people saying, oh, and all of these things were part of my reconstructing what it was like to be in the moment with her. 
I found that a number of fans had posted their experiences about her on um, various websites in the wake of her passing. So I started going through these epitaphs and um, sought out their opinions. So the next slide um, is one of these epitaphs, and I just want to read it for you very briefly. I lived in New York City for 15 years that coincided with the major triumphs Beverly Sills enjoyed at the New York City Opera and elsewhere, and I was able to attend many of them. No memory of those years measures up to the memory of those beautiful events. In fact, few memories of my entire life do. I shall always be grateful for the beauty she shared with us so generously and shall remember her with love for the rest of my life. And this is Robert Nelson, who wrote that epitaph sitting on his porch in Tennessee. <laughs> and I asked him about very uh, many of her roles. And in regard to her Anna Bolena, he said, more than just vocal colorization was involved in making Anna Boleyn seem so young and thereby so vulnerable. Not long after I had this email from him, I found this page in Beverly Sills' score, and you'll see at the top where it says young, young, young. So I immediately wrote back to him and said, wow, Robert, you really got it. That's what she was intending. <laughs> and that was, made a big impression on him. And here's what he wrote back. To see that annotated page from Beverly's Anna Bolena score was to have a moment of real sadness about another place and another time now long gone. Now New York is far away, Beverly is gone, and the world is darker. It is good to know that I was able to understand Beverly's intentions to whatever extent I did. So for some audience members, aspects of a performance persist as vivid memories. The after vibrations of a performance continue to ring long after the show has ended. For some, they reverberate for a lifetime. This was certainly the case for me. When Sills died in 2007, I was compelled to recognize and to take into account the force that she had been in my own life. My point this evening is to illustrate that the connections made, often in the moment of live performance, between an extraordinary, audience, or extraordinary artist and her audience members may last as a positive force for a lifetime. Sometimes we imagine opera is a distant and elitist art. However, my Sills work shows resoundingly that this opera singer touched the lives of many people, people of varying socioeconomic backgrounds. Whether they encountered her in the opera house or singing on The Tonight Show, Sills positively impacted their lives. Sills and her art mattered. Thank you for your attention.